So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Chautauqua. I'm Reverend Barbara Williams, and I would invite you to stand and sing along as we do our welcome song. trying it out, we, we lost our ability to go for it on our PowerPoint. And I tested it all this week, but when somebody comes in from Zoom, it stops our PowerPoint. So that's all right. We've got Welcome, many Welcome on Zoom. On Zoom, <laughs> right. Welcome on Zoom. Oh, yeah, but somehow the PowerPoint, and there, <laughs> yeah, the PowerPoint disappears. So um, anyhow, let's begin with prayer. Be, be seated. So um, this week it's interesting. Tomorrow is Independence Day, and I've been thinking about that. I don't know if you sit with that word and think about what it means to you, but one of the thoughts that came to me is that we have this idea about patriotism, and somehow the meaning for me has been lost. Some other people have claimed it in ways that don't touch my heart. And so I've been sitting with it and thinking now, how do I pray into the idea of being a patriot? And I read an article in the New York Times and a woman talked about that. And she said that her new version of patriotism was to decide to trust, to decide not to separate from others. That whatever we're going to do to become new patriots, the patriot means that we've got to weave like a tapestry together. So let's hold that in prayer as we are entering this um, independent season. So, and you may just wish to put your hand on your heart. And let's just recognize that there's some turmoil going around and that we are being honored with holding that space that we don't give up on people. Feel those words for a moment. What does that mean not to give up? Because it's so easy. To think it's too big and yet we gather together to set a consciousness this morning where we weave as the unity song goes 
we weave together our love, our respect, or all the ways that, and all the people that are serving our country, are serving that original idea of independence. Both individually, but collectively. And so right now, if there's a place where you're sensing that maybe you've lost a little of your hope, we know that Beyond our eyesight, that healing, that understanding, that a new beginning is just, the seeds are just being planted. And so we are the nurturers in our own spaces, our own places. We nurture that seed and we celebrate this weekend for new beginnings, for independence, and so it is. Amen and amen. So I'd like to tell you a little about Unity of Chautauqua. We are part of Unity Worldwide, and you can find more about Unity on that table right <coughs> over there. I hope you'll pick up the daily word. Uh, and look at all the different different things. And if you are not on our email list, I hope you will do that. Unity, we call ourselves Positive Practical Christianity. And we began as a prayer ministry and in the 1800s. And also, there's probably a unity in your, wherever you're living, all you have to do again is go to unity.org. And if you'd like to follow us, we are, we are on video, and we have a YouTube channel, we have a website, and a Facebook page. And you can get to all of those by going and combining Chautauqua, which is chq.org, where we're, we're, we're at right now, it's Chautauqua Institution, and you can combine that with Unity, so we're unitychq.org. So it's so wonderful to have you here, and I wanna tell you what's going on this week a little bit. Right here in this room, every morning from 8 to 8.30, there is a daily word meditation. And on Wednesday night, we have a special um, presentation. And I would just like to point out, Mary, could you just stand up here for a moment? Yeah. And I want to read a little about what Mary's doing on Wednesday. This was so exciting. And Mary, what's really interesting, and I may not pronounce this right, but it says that not only are you the minister in Buffalo for now, this year, 20 years. Yeah, starting 20 years. You yeah. are 20 years. Mm -hmm. And, but you're also certified in the, now say, see if I say this, Kripala? Kripala, the Kripala uh, Yoga Center, which is in um, <laughs> Western Massachusetts in the Berkshires. Mm -hmm. And they have, a, they have a school of out, mindful outdoor uh, leadership, where we uh, are trained to lead mindfulness experiences, meditation outside of nature. So we're, we're so glad, and this Wednesday night at 630, mm -hmm. and it's in the Turner Center, so if you're on campus, that means taking the north bus to the Turner, and we're in the first classroom near the front doors, and that'll be from 630 to 730, and you'll be talking about Get outside, go with them. Yeah. So thank you, Mary. <coughs> and let's see if I remember our oracle. Janine's going to sing us in to, as Mary shares with us. <coughs> okay, this is a, it's a song called By Breath. And I chose it because we're we're talking about trees, but we're talking about the outdoors and, and nature, and this shows how we're, we're all connected by breath, by body, spirit, we're all one with the elements as well. So um, the chorus, I'll teach you the chorus and then I'll do the verses. Okay, so. 
here's how the line goes. It's very simple. It's a line for the chorus.
talking a little bit about the workshop I'll be sharing on uh, Wednesday afternoon, that it, I'll be sharing with you some very specific techniques and approaches to going deep, deepening your connection with nature and with spirit. And they are techniques and things that you can use if you're on a long hike, you know, if you're walking through the park, if you're sitting inside your house looking out a window, it's something you can share with someone who may be in a hospital bed or in a nursing home that they can do looking out a window, just for people of all abilities and all, wherever you are, uh, it, there is the opportunity to deepen our connection with nature and deepen our connection with the spirit within us. So, so you know, one of my passions is spending time in nature. And when I saw that this was the um, theme for this week at Chautauqua, I just wrote to Barbara right away. Barbara and said, "Can I be on? Can I? Could you schedule me for this week?" But I feel like spending time in nature and communing with trees, particularly today, I want to talk about today, is an opportunity to kind of access messages that are hidden in plain sight. And I had an experience uh, last fall, I was at a retreat center, a chapel house in upstate New York, and it's, it's this beautiful building where you have big windows and there are all these tall trees outside the windows. You feel like you're in a tree house or you're in nature. And, and as I would look out the window, it was just like a gentle breeze flowing through and, and, and you could just see the trees were just sort of, uh, you know, uh, waving with the, with the wind and, and the, the, the leaves and the branches. And I just felt like the trees were waving to me, that it was just as I saw their branches with their leaves, it felt like they were waving just to me. And so I just wanted to invite you for a moment to look around the room and wave to each other, <laughs> like a tree. Send each other that energy. <laughs> but it just felt like they were a message. And so I feel like trees are always communicating with me, always trying to get our attention. And, it, and there's always a message in it. And it reminds me of a story of two spiritual students that were walking along the road in India. And they had been on their path for quite a while, and they were wondering, when are we going to get enlightened? You know, when's this going to happen? And they see a yogi sitting by the side of the road, under a tree, of course. <laughs> so they said, let's go ask him. And so the first student goes up to the yogi and says, when am I going to get enlightened? And the yogi, I, I, I think for you, two lifetimes. And he came back all mad and frustrated. Oh, two lifetimes. I've been working so hard and trying to do everything perfectly. And, and then the second student went up to the yogi and said, how long will it be until I become enlightened? He said, you see that tree there with all those leaves? That many lifetimes. And the second student came back and he was all excited and happy and Oh, great, you know. And the first student said, what's wrong with you? What do you mean he said all those lifetimes? And the second student said, but, he said, yes, yes, but I am going to become enlightened. <laughs> it's going to happen. And I thought, well, for me, spending time in nature, being with trees, it is enlightening. Helps me to feel enlightened. And the, the man that I studied with at the Kripala Center, he wrote a book called Rewilding. You know, and, and it's just this idea that we need to reestablish our connection with nature. That many of us have, are suffering from nature deficit disorder, that we don't spend enough time in nature. And they've interestingly found that the number one thing that is the greatest influence on people later in life becoming more environmentally aware and, and advocating for policies and living their life in a way that's more in, in alignment with nature. The number one thing is having perhaps had a, an experience as a child where they spent time you know, in a, a, a wild or a semi-wild place, some memories of something that were really powerful, and also having had an adult in their life that 
that taught them a respect for nature. But really, when I think about this idea of going outside to go inside, you know, it helps, it helps, I think, to understand that the word nature has really two meanings. You know, we think of nature outside, trees and plants and, and, and birds, but the word nature also describes our, our essential nature, the inherent features or characteristics of something. You know, in unity, we talk about our Christ nature the divine presence within us and, and how these go together. And, and I think about Jesus, you know, metaphysically in the Bible, Jesus represents our Christ nature, our, our essential nature. And, and Jesus spent time in nature and he told stories about nature and he performed miracles, you know, in nature. And, and one of my favorite stories is, of course, the calming of the storms while he was in a boat. You know, and, 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 and the story begins, of course, with, with him saying, let us go across to the other side. And, and really what he's saying is, Jesus is saying, here, I'm going to demonstrate for you what it is like to cross over to the other side, to move from one state of consciousness to another, to, to leave my old story behind and step into a new story over that threshold. And, and that's what nature does for me, helps me to cross over from a state of worry and concern to, to more uh, confident and relaxed. And so the story begins that they said they were leaving the crowds behind. And the crowds are our worldly thoughts. And Jesus took the disciples with him in the boat, which means his spiritual powers. And you were in the boat. They were in the boat, you know. What is a boat? I have a cousin who has a really nice boat, and his wife gave him a sign that he put on the boat. Says, "What is a boat? Definition of boat? It's a hole in the water through which you pour large sums of money." <laughs> so, well, that's one definition of a boat. <laughs> but another, but boats, you know, you can just think about what is a boat? It's something that keeps us afloat. <laughs> It helps us travel from one place to another, especially in turbulent times. Um, our Unity co-founder, Charles Fillmore, he said a boat represents a positive, sustaining state of consciousness that prevents one from sinking into a negative condition. Gosh, don't we need that sometimes to, to, to keep from sinking into worry and, Oh no, and what next? You know, where's the next thing that to a positive sustaining consciousness? So so boats represent our consciousness, our spiritual awareness and teaching, our faith in a power greater than ourselves, our ability to stay afloat in turbulent times. And, and so gosh, what naturally happens when we start to move from one thing to another is Storms come up, you know, and that's what happened in this boat. And, and it was filling up with water, and the disciples were feeling overwhelmed, you know. And sometimes we can feel overwhelmed in our lives. Oh, boy, more information, and more another news report. And something happens, and we get that sinking feeling, you know. But so we call for help, and the help we're calling for is an awakening of our Christ consciousness. And so, of course, Jesus was, he was sleeping in the moment, <laughs> sleeping on the chair. But well, he was sleeping or he was resting. He was preparing for the demonstration that he was about to do or what was going to be needed. And so the, the disciples were starting to freak out. And they, they woke up Jesus and, and he saw Come and help us, save us, you know, don't you care that we're perishing here? And in our own lives, the healing happens the moment we make contact with our Christ consciousness, when we see something, oh, okay. And so Jesus, what happened? He stood up, we're told, he rebuked the wind. He said, peace, be still. And rebuke can mean several different things, but one meaning is to remove. So he was removing the fear. He was 
taking the power away from something externally and reclaiming our spiritual power. You know, it's that, you know, the idea of denial in affirmation. He was denying the power of an outer circumstance. He was saying, this is how you do it. You stand up even in the midst of a storm and take your power back and say, peace, be still. And of course, the storms were calmed. And the disciples were taught an important lesson that day. So, you know, I think about, for me, spending time in nature is like that. You know, that, it, that it, it, it's, it's like what Charles Fillmore said, it gives me a positive, sustaining state of consciousness so I keep from sinking into a negative, worry about negative conditions. It helps me to connect with my own Christ nature. It helps me to find that place where I can stand in a storm and still say, Peace, be still. And we can do this sitting outside. We can, we can do it sitting. I do it. You know, somebody said to me, well, or you were saying, what's it like to live in the winter, live through <laughs> up north in the winter? You know, somebody who's been in Florida most of their life. And, you know, it's okay. I love, I, actually, I love snow. Or, you know, I can enjoy uh, the weather even inside looking out my window. But you know what I have found is that when you have an experience, you know, an experience can stay with us for a lifetime. That nothing can really take that experience from us. That it, it's something that I can just draw upon and close my eyes and be there. And, you know, I think about there's another little story here about a time when Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson had gone on a camping trip, and uh, and they had dinner, had a bottle of wine, and then they crawled in the tent and fell asleep. Hours later, Watson awoke. And he nudged his faithful friend, hey, hey Holmes, look up at the sky. Tell me what you see. And Holmes said, wow, oh, I see a million stars. You know? And he said, well, what does that tell you? And Sherlock says, well, you know, astronomically, it tells me that there's, gosh, millions of galaxies and potentially billions of stars. And astrologically, I think Saturn is in Leo. <laughs> and horologically, I deduce that time is probably about quarter past three. And theologically, I think that God is all-powerful and we're so small and insignificant. And Meteorologically, I think it means we're going to have a beautiful day. What does it tell you, Watson? Watson gets silent for a minute and says, Holmes, you idiot! Somebody stole our tent! <laughs> That's why we're going to have all these stars. <laughs> but, you know, I have found that an experience in nature is something that I carry with me that can never be stolen from me. Can never, I can never lose it, that I always carry it with me. And I, it, it's, something that, it's something that I draw upon. It's like, you know, spiritual awakening. Once we awaken, you can't go back and pretend you don't know something that you've come to know. And, and one such experience like that, for me, is what I call my Petoskey moment. Anybody know what a Petoskey stone is? Petoskey, no. oh gosh, no Michiganders. Good, I get to educate you then. I grew up in Michigan. <laughs> I was born in the Detroit area. And Petoskey actually is the state stone. But my parents had a cottage up north. Uh, and we call it up north. <laughs> and there's a little town up there called Petoskey. And it looks out on the little Traverse Bay. And it's about a, it was about a four and a half, five hour drive for us to drive up from Detroit every summer to go to our cottage up north. And as you get closer into Petoskey, there's a series of rolling hills, and about well, six or eight of them, until you finally get to the, the final hill But when you drive down into Petoskey. But at the top of that last hill, just before you get to Petoskey, you see this beautiful, magnificent view of the little Traverse Bay that Petoskey sits on. And I'll just tell you, my mother 
struggled with mental and emotional, mental health issues. And, but for her, Petoskey was just, it was, it was just heaven on earth. It was that place that brought peace to her soul, to her body. It was the place where she could go and, and find peace in every way. And, and I will always remember so much when we would be driving into Petoskey, we'd all, my mom and my dad and me, I was an only child, would be waiting on baby breath to get to that last, is it, is it gonna be this next one? Is it gonna be this next? We're almost there to that top. top. And at that instant, when we would be at the top of that last hill, when we would first get that glimpse of Little Traveler's Bay, the energy in our car was so palpable that when she would see that sight of Little Traverse Bay in Petoskey, it was like every care in the world just went out the window. Any, any tension, any worry, any stress in her, in her body, in her lives, any concern, it was just gone and just melted. It's just when she saw that view, it's like all is well with the world, everything. <laughs> You know, it was like, okay, God is, God's here, God is good, all is well. And, and this is actually a Petoskey stone. The, the city, the town is named after, there's a unique fossil formation that, that, that this is the only type of fossil anywhere in the world that, and, and these stones wash up on the shore of Little Traverse Bay. And actually I'm wearing a Petoskey necklace too. And it's the state stone, but it's um, it's a unique type of fossil that and uh, and, so, and the um, native obviously it's an Indian name, and so I keep these stones close handy, and I wear this necklace once in a while to remind me of that feeling that my mom would feel when we would first see Petoskey Little Traverse Bay, and how transformative an experience of nature can be. And I can go there in person, but I just can close my eyes and be there and have that sense of peace and calm and release. I had someone share with me recently, so being around water, obviously, we know is a wonderful healing experience. And I had someone share with me recently, he said, you know, if you have some cares or worries, just imagine a flowing stream or a river. And whatever you're ready to release or let go of, look downstream and just throw it downstream. <laughs> and then look upstream and receive the, the, the blessings of fresh, clean water. In fact, we could just do that right now for a moment, just go into your heart. And imagine a powerful stream coming through here. Ah, and if there's anything right now in this moment that you're ready to release or cares or concerns for yourself or our world, just throw it downstream. Let the water carry it, carry it away. And having released it now, we turn and look upstream to feel fresh, clean water, a flow of divine energy. Say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the flowing streams in our lives, all the ways that energy is flowing. So Jesus was standing in a boat. He was standing in the water. And I can only imagine that the boat was made out of wood. It came from trees. <laughs> you know, trees are living things. You know, they're we are different and alike at the same time. And indigenous people said, thought of humans and trees are the standing ones. Of all the living things in nature, we are the standing ones. You know, trees stand unapologetically in who they are. You know, so to say, stand in your truth. Stand tall. You know, Jesus stood up in the boat. You know, when everybody else around him was kind of freaking out and feeling overwhelmed and the water was, you know, he, 
he was demonstrating how to stand tall. And, and we can learn from the trees that we can stand up. We can learn to stand up for peace. I stand up for, for love and forgiveness. I can stand up for what matters to me. I can stand up for being my authentic self. And, and we can know that we're not alone in this, that we have a whole forest that's standing with us. You know, in years past, a grove of trees was thought of to be like ancient churches. You know, there's a woman that's going to be speaking tomorrow, Victoria Luz, on Church in the Wild, and she does her services outside. And, but thinking of being in nature as a, an ancient church, a grove. When you think about what other spiritual qualities come to mind when you think of a tree. About stability, wisdom, um, shelter, growth, renewal. Uh, one of the things that I've come to think about trees is that we can think of the four parts of a tree. The roots, the trunk, the canopy, or the crown, and the seeds. And, uh, you know, roots, you know, roots to me represent our faith, you know, that, you know, that, and sometimes you can see the roots of a tree, sometimes they're above, sometimes you can't see them at all, but we know that they're there, the tree couldn't be standing there, you know, it's like the presence of God, sometimes we can we see it, we're aware of it, and say, we think, where is God in all of this, you know, but we know that they're there, and our faith is really deep. You know, and then the trunk represents, you know, strength, you know, the ability to hold up things, to stand tall, and, and, uh, and, and, and then, you know, the canopy is, you know, is sort of like, you know, that there's always something, you know, the canopy, the crown of a, tr a tree looks in all directions, and it's sort of like this overarching, it's like the presence of God that is blessing us in every way. And then seeds, you know, sowing seeds, you know, we sow seeds abundantly of, of love and kindness and lots of things. But, you know, trees, some trees live a very long time. Redwood, right? a lot of trees, 500, 800, there are trees on this earth that are a thousand years old. And just imagine the ancient wisdom that those trees hold. So, so I promised uh, in the little write-up that I would offer a suggestion on how to approach a tree, how to, how to make friends with a tree. And so I wanted to uh, make sure I shared that with you today. And, and, and so here's what I, is a, some suggestions on how to approach a tree. First is just to, to, to look around and notice what tree calls to you. You know, that, that just look, feel, sense. You know, is there a particular tree that's kind of inviting you? Just, you know, feel something, you know. Oh, I'm kind of drawn to this tree. There's something about it that fascinates me a little bit. Or, you know, that there is an energy and there's a vibration there. And then notice what's called the apron of the tree, which is the base where the tree meets the earth. And maybe there's a natural place to sit down or a little spot there, or to draw closer to the tree. You might even want to take off your shoes and stand on the ground with the tree. And then, this is the part I'll ask you to help me with, is, is as you approach the tree, be the tree. Make the shape of the tree. You know, some trees stand tall, they're straight and tall, some trees are kind of like this a little bit. Or some trees have two trunks, you know, or, or some trees are you know, kind of um, waving with the wind. Or my mom's favorite tree was a weeping willow tree. You know, that's a good yoga stretch to just let yourself go down. Some trees are wide and abundant. To be the tree. Yeah, yeah, so you can do this with me. <laughs> be a tree, you know. Maybe it's tall, maybe it's to the side, a little bit. 
uh, maybe there's two tribes. This is the exercise part of the sermon, so <laughs> giving it an opportunity if you'd like. <laughs> and wave a little. And then you can bow to the tree and connect with the tree in some way. You know, I call this hiking with your hands. You know, touch the bar or just feel it in some way. You know, to connect with it. And then sit quietly and just listen. And sit or stand and just be open to the experience. You know, to just feel the energy or maybe the tree has a message for you. And there's a story that I love Brother Lawrence tells in Practicing the Presence, his book, about at one point in his life he was really just down and discouraged and just in, really in a, a very deep, dark place. And he looked out at a tree that was completely barren. It was winter. And he looked at that tree and he thought, and he knew that by springtime, God was going to restore that tree, that it would be once again, like these trees here, all totally covered with leaves. And he had the thought, well, if God is going to do that with that tree, God can do that with my life too. And that was his moment of turning around. And, you know, in my house, uh, in my, the chair that I sit in for my morning meditation, there's a tree right across the street that is exactly like that. In the winter, it gets completely barren. And in the summer, it's like these trees totally. And every, you know, almost every day when I look at that tree, I remember that story of Brother Lawrence. And I think, whatever is going on in my life or in the world, God will restore it to fullness and wholeness in the same way that it does that tree every year. So trees have a message for us. They speak to us in some way. And, and when you feel complete, you can thank the tree for helping you. You can mentally say it or say it out loud. And, uh, or if you, you know, give it some Reiki, if you do Reiki, or some, some way of giving the tree a blessing for thanking you. And so I really think that trees are here to remind us to stand tall, to draw upon the wisdom of the ages, to know that we have deep roots like the tree that there is a canopy of crowns looking over us that's reaching for the sky, and that we have abundant seeds to sow in our words and our thoughts and our actions. And so I wanted to close now with this quote from Lao Tzu. He said, keep a green bow in your heart, and a singing bird will come. And to me, that's a beautiful poetic way of saying when we stay close to trees in our heart, a singing bird will come. And so I'd like to, uh, is there a song now? And then we'll take a little bit of time for meditation. And that's your part. <laughs>
now where we are surrounded by beautiful trees. We are in a forest. And I invite you to take a few moments in the silence to have your own Petoskey moment. Perhaps it's feeling the energy of the trees around us or or in taking you to a place and experience of nature that you have had, that you carry with you in your heart. hidden in plain sight, waiting for us to notice them. And as we do, we're able to more and more sow seeds of loving kindness. And so may all beings be happy. May all beings be well. May all beings be healthy and strong and safe. And may all beings live with ease and grace. Take another deep breath to pull up the, the energy from our roots coming up through our trunk, up through our crown, and out to bless the world. And 
may the forest be with you. Namaste. So let's just take a moment. I just, Mary, I never realized how easy it is to go to those favorite places till you reminded me. I was there in an instant. And all the feelings in my body that come from sitting at a waterfall in North Carolina on a big rock under a tree, they just came flooding back. And I'm still just, it's like, God bumps. So I'm so grateful. And then uh, Janine is our director of music, and you touched exactly what I needed to hear <laughs> to remind me. So I'm grateful. So this is our time of our offering. And just a reminder that the world's offering us as Mary and Janine reminded us, the world is offering these amazing gifts. And so every place that we offer with our gifts to this moment, our gifts to the world, is God energy is, I call that tree energy, it's just, we become the flow just like the tree takes in the water and the nutrients and brings out the oxygen and so we're that too, right? And so each of you are a gift. And not only your physical gift, but would you take the gift of your heart right now as we hold our gifts and realize that that is what the fourth is calling us. It's calling us to be the gift that doesn't give up just absolutely knew that this morning when I sat, that we are to give up. No matter what's on the outside, just like the boat, <laughs> Jesus was clear about that. We're getting to the other side. And all this external is just the illusion we bought into that takes away our power. And so we're claiming like a tree, we're standing in that power. And so let's say these words of our offertory to claim that these are what we are. We're divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. So Janine is going to sing us through as we collect our offering.
So let's own that, that blessing. And we bless these gifts, and just if, if you're not as familiar with what Unity of Chautauqua does, we support Unity Ministers coming here for nine different weeks. And oh, it's a blessing for us, too. It's a mutual, if you didn't hear that, Mary just said she's so grateful. And it's mutual. So we have this magnificent group of people here, including our board members, and Kelly is our board president treasurer, that are the energy that creates a place for Unity Ministers to experience Chautauqua Institution. And I can't think of a greater gift. So um, anyhow, so let's just hold our, you bring your hands up and just take, we take these gifts and we know they go so far beyond these walls that there are ministers that come here and experience and maybe breathe this deep air because I've been in church ministry and it's a busy life. And so we invite them here through these gifts into the consciousness of the beauty of Chautauqua, of the wisdom and the love and the support. And so it is, amen. amen. And so we are going, this is, this is fun. This is one of my favorite songs and is Weave. And just a little history about it. And it has lots of verses about we're many colors and many textures all coming together. And we just sing the first part of it. But we used to, when we did membership, we would weave through the congregation. We have all the members, we're a new member, and they would be put in a circle through the congregation, and the congregation would weave them, and they would then move from person to person, and somebody would say, you're woven into our group. And so now with COVID, we're not weaving ourselves as much. However, would you just take that consciousness that today we created a consciousness of weaving through Mary's inspiration, through Janine's inspiration, where that something that you've heard today is going to change and shift your life in ways you'll be surprised. And so if you'd sing, we're going to sing Weave, and then we're going to, we're going to sing our peace song. So please join us.
thinking of all the oxygen and the blessings that come from all of nature, as we say. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you, God. Thank you for being here. Thank you.